Hello everyone and welcome to this video. Now today I'm going to be doing a vinyl update video just showing some of the record purchases which I've picked up over the last month. So there's uh, various stuff in here, a few uh, new releases, a couple of things uh, which I bought when I was down in um, London a couple of weeks ago, um, a few things from a shop. Um, a few things from a couple of shops around Edinburgh and then also um, like some things from my first uh, car boot sale which I went to um, like which was like quite um, like successful so yeah I'll just get um, started um, with the first one which is actually an online purchase and uh, uh, kind of bought this in the wake of um, the sad death of this artist actually so it's a uh, world party and the album bang so um, I think it was in March or maybe even the end of February but we lost a like car Paul Wallinger um, and James Griffiths did a really great tribute video where he basically heaped a lot of praise on this album, Bang, from um, 1993. So this is one which I didn't have. Um, like I had the first two, two I had the first two World Party al albums, but this is one which I didn't own. Um, and I was quite keen to get this this specific version of it because it has been reissued, but it's got a dreadful cover now. But this one I was lucky enough to find on Discogs um, for I think 25 pounds. So I, I thought I, I would take the chance with it, and it is a great, great, great record. It's a lot of fantastic tracks. Like Is It Like Today is probably the highlight, but I really like the track uh, Sunshine on um, side two. So there's the original like in his sleeve off it there, and the record is just on this um, Ensign Chrysalis um, label. So yeah, that's a uh, world party. And bang. Okay, now I've got a couple of um, new releases to show um, as well. These both picked up in the last couple of weeks here. So I got um, the new uh, Jesus and Mary Chain album here. Yeah, these two, I didn't um, pre order this or anything. This was kind of just a bit of an impulse buy. I got this out of Sci Records in Edinburgh and it was a lovely signed um, copy as well. It's also a deluxe version which has a kind of picture booklet in the middle of it. So it's really nice packaging um, like on this. As for the album, it's possibly a grower. It's it's a little bit different if, if you're expecting things if you're expecting something like Darklands part two you know this is not it um but there was some good tracks there i particularly liked i think it was either the second of july or gill 71 like one of like the closing tracks was just really really great i thought and then there's a few other ones good ones sprinkled throughout it's all this is on a kind of red and then the other one is on a kind of greedy sort of vinyl. So yeah, they're nice to pick this one up, the new Jesus and Mary Chain album. And then the other new release I picked up was the latest one by Ride here. This one is called uh, Interplay here. And this is a good, decent record. This is a, it's another coloured vinyl version this here, which I'll just quickly show here. So it's got a gatefold with a kind of rare photo of the band. That band, I don't think they've ever been featured like on their albums before. So it's quite nice to see them show their faces kind of thing. And this is on a kind of sort of bluey, kind of bluey, greedy vinyl there, um, which is quite nice. Um, as for this album, I didn't, I thought this was, again, it's maybe one which I do need to give a bit of time to grow on me. I probably prefer the other two more recent albums, Weather Diaries and, um, what's the other one? Is it called This Is Not A Normal Place, I think, you know, like the one from a couple of years ago. Both of those, I think, have more standout tracks on them. But this one was good, but maybe do need to give it a bit more of a chance to grow on me. So yeah, it'll be interesting to see where both of those two lie on my end of year ranking list. And then this next one, it was actually just like an Amazon purchase. Now I do very rarely try and buy stuff on Amazon these days, but this one um, was actually like um, on, I think it was either like on sale or it was just for a fairly decent price for a Blur's album 13, which when you normally see it like in record shops, it's about 45, 50 pounds of asking for it, which is just, absolute stupid money for like a new like vinyl and um, like at, at that kind of price i'm kind of tempted just to pay the extra 50 to get like an original to be honest but this one was on amazon for i think 25 pounds so i thought right i'm gonna get it it's not my favorite blur record i'm not gonna lie it is definitely a more difficult kind of listen certainly compared to their earlier work which is a lot more like immediate but there's a couple of really good chats there certainly tender and coffee and tv are the two standout singles 
singles on here. So there are some good tracks on it, but yeah, maybe does need a bit more time to grow on me still. Okay, now I've got some finds from when I was in um, London recently. So these first uh, four are from Sister Ray uh, Records on uh, Berwick Street. So I got this uh, Paul Weller 12-inch uh, single here. This is for um, Into Tomorrow, his debut uh, solo single, or rather this was credited to the Paul Weller movement. I don't think he was 100% um, confident going out kind of solo, but this is nice. You've got great B-side, here's a new thing, and that spiritual feeling is more of a kind of jazzy kind of dub track, which is interesting. It's not not brilliant. And yeah, Into Tomorrow, really good song. So um, yeah, um, nice to pick up that one. And then another Weller one, uh, which I didn't even know really existed until I seen it in Sister A, was this um, It's Written in the Stars, this 10-inch um, um, single here, which is really nice. Um, again, two unique B-side song called Horseshoe Drama and Push Button Automatic um, on the B-sides there. So yeah, that was um, Paul Weller and It's Written in the Stars. An another single now from Sister Ray, um, which again, I didn't actually know um, existed. It was one which I was like, I didn't know that was a single. It's a Paul Simon one for um, Under African Skies here from the Graceland album. So this was, I think, the fifth and final single released from Graceland. There's no unique B-sides on here like or anything, but it's nice just to get it for the cover like if anything else. So yeah, uh, Paul Simon there and Under African Skies. And last one now from uh, Sister Ray in London was this uh, Paul McCartney one here, which you rarely see, which is um, From a Lover to a Friend, which was the single from the Driving Rain um, album here. So yeah, nice to get this one here. Uh, this one, I can't remember how much this was, maybe about a, a tenner, I think. So um, yeah, like not too not not too pricey considering uh, considering you rarely see it. So yeah, nice um, nice one. Further completes my um, Paul McCartney singles collection there. And then next batch from another London record store called uh, Flashback Records. They've got a few um, kind of branches like dotted around um, London. I think these ones are all from the shop in Islington, um, like, their, like their shop like in Islington there. So I've got a few um, singles here, a few seven inch singles. So I've got um, a jam one here down in the tube station at midnight, slowly getting there with the jam singles here. Started to collect them and yeah, I'm just trying to get them all now. So yeah, this, this is what I was missing. Um, one of the more, slightly well not, well, not rarer ones, but certainly one of the more desirable ones to get. You've got good B-sides, uh, So Sad About Us, um, that the old Who song there. So, yeah, nice to get that one. This one was a pound. This is um, Elvis Costello and the Attractions, You Little Fool, from the Imperial Bedroom record. An odd single, flop single. Not, not a great choice, I don't think, for a single, but a good song, though. Um, yeah, there from 1982. This one is the, I think, the debut single from Echo and the Bunny Man here. Uh, this is um, the pictures on my wall here. So this one was a little bit more pricey, but I thought, you know, it's Echo and the Bunny Man's first single. It's definitely worth it. Um, so yeah, um, there's that one there from 1979, I think. Another uh, Paul Weller item here. So this is uh, No Tears to Cry here from the Wake Up the Nation album, just on a nice wee seven-inch single, limited edition numbered copy there. What's that? 470 odd there um, and you've got a B-side uh, song um, Riverman and Nick Drake song there so yeah that's a Paul Weller one. And the last single there again this was quite cheap maybe two or three pounds but it was a New Order one for Round and Round. One of my favourite New Order songs actually really underrated track there from the Technique album. And then also got this one here, which is a 10 inch single here, which is uh, one for XTC and The Disappointed here. I think I've already got this like on seven inch, but you know, I'm a big XTC fan and collector. So when I see this, I thought that I would uh, pick it up. Um, fortunately, no unique B-sides on it. Just got the Smartest Monkeys and Humble Daisy, both of which are on non-such anyway. Um, but no, a good song. Certainly one of their, um, like, again, more underrated singles there for me. This album now, I took a bit of a um, chance on it. It was a bit of a blind buy this one here. Like, I certainly, I knew off the band name, The Mighty Lemon Drops, um, but I didn't really know what they sounded like. But I thought, okay, I've I've, I've read about them. or I've, I've seen them mentioned somewhere. I think they're going to be in my, my kind of sweet spot and they certainly were this was a great 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 album and um, world without end this was something like this is 18, 1988 this came out so i'm not sure where this ranks in their discography but it was a great record this particularly the opening track inside out is brilliant and then i mean sex size maybe not quite as strong but certainly a very 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 good record here and um, the mighty lemon drops and then last one from the london trip here is a, a brian wilson's uh, solo album self-titled solo album here from the late 
80s here. I think 88 this one came out here. So this one is a good record here. Um, some great chats in it, like Love and Mercy is probably the standout chat. But there's a lot of like, good stuff like on this album. Quite a bit of a hodgepodge though in terms of producers. There's a couple of chats today with Jeff Lynn on them. And then there's a few other producers kind of here and there. It's also one of the albums which has um, quite a bit of involvement from, from uh, Eugene Landy. who is kind of notorious kind of doctor therapist who basically abused Brian for most of his kind of tenure like with him so it's it's certainly tainted like by his involvement and oversight with this album but it's still a good record though and um, and yeah it was a bit of a yeah bit of a comeback like for Brian Wilson who'd been yeah pretty much spent most of the 80s like in like the wilderness Okay, got a few records now from various shops around the Edinburgh kind of area here. So a few um, singles here from um, from a shop called Almond River Records, which is all, which is a bit hit and miss when you go in. If, if if they've got something very specific that like you're after, because they post everything they everything they put out like on like the Facebook page. If you go in um, for kind of seeing something soon after it's posted. You won't, you won't be disappointed, like you know. But um, on on this time, I think the two items which I'd seen them post uh, had had both been sold, like had both gone. So I only really um, had um, I, I, I guess, like I only really like looked through like these few singles, like which there were here. So I got um, a few here. So I got um, a Bowie one. Uh, this is not America here, which I think was from a film or something, and kind of mid eighties song. Not one of my favorite Bowie tracks, but it's not on an album, so I reckon yeah get the single why not um this one here was um u2 he got for i think a pound uh, for new year's day one of their best songs Pro probably my favorite u2 song to be fair it's a great track certainly before they got a bit too overblown a bit too pretentious i think yeah this was when they were still um like quite an exciting and quite a vibrant band i like got this time yeah 1983 there this one is a, a Delamitri uh, single here, which, again, I've never seen before. Uh, Sticks and Stones Girl from their debut album. Really underrated debut album, actually. A lot of people um, do gloss over that record, but it's kind of got it's got a kind of indie feel to it, which I just really like. Um, a, a, a slightly kind of... Um, a slight kind of scrappiness to it, which I think they would very quickly lose, like on like the Waking Hours album. So yeah, really nice new single there. Um, this one is an Echo and the Bunny Men one here, um, which is for the song yeah, Silver. Great cover on it there, fantastic track. And then another Echo and the Bunny one, a little bit more pricey this one here, but um, I think a little bit rarer this one. It's uh, for a song called uh, The Puppet here, which is not one I knew. Um, but it's got it's got do it clean like on the B side, which is probably the more popular song these days. Um, so yeah, nice to get those two there as well. Okay, and then that same day, I went up to uh, Lowport Music in uh, Linlithgow and picked up these two albums here. So I got this um, Undertones one, uh, which is for the album Positive Touch. Kind of this was their third studio album. I'm very much a change in. Uh, and very much a change in direction for them. A lot more synthesized, a lot more new wave kind of feel to it than, say, their earlier stuff, which had a kind of more immediate kind of sort of, not punk, but that kind of power pop kind of feel to it. This one, they're kind of spreading their wings a bit, and it's hit and miss. It's not, it's certainly, again, maybe one I do need to give a bit more of a chance to grow on me. But no, um, um, good record there, positive touch. And this one here is by a band who I know very little about, actually, um, but I bought it anyway. It's called um, the, it's, it's by a band called The Triffids, and this is Calentur is the name of the album. This is kind of Celtic, um, indie Celtic folk, I'd say, is probably the best um, definition of it. A um, bit of jangle in there as well, so it's, 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 it's quite hard to pin down this album. Probably the standout track is um, A Trick of the Light, so yeah, listen to that song and see what you think. But no, really good band here from mid-80s, I think 87, I think I want to say. So yeah, um, the Triffids, no idea where they've come from, um, but yeah, um, maybe we'll be getting into them a bit more, we'll see. And then also from Lilithka Music there, picked up a few 7-inch um, uh, singles as well here. So got um, a John Lennon one here uh, for Watching the Wheels. Really nice cover on it there. Got a, um, a Yoko Ono B-side and Yes, I'm Your Angel from the Double Fantasy album. This one here is quite nice. It's uh, Deacon Blue and uh, Dignity. Now this was, I think, one of the multiple reissues of the single here. So this one is a really nice kind of gatefold 
sleeve there. Um, it says it's a new recording and then you get three other B-sides on it um, as well. So yeah, really nice new single there. Another one I here primarily just bought for the sleeve to be honest, but it's um, David Bowie and Air uh, Fashion here, which again is one I didn't have. Really good single here. One of his, um, yeah, like one of my favourite Bowie songs actually. No unique B-side on here, but nice just to get it though nonetheless. And then to finish from there, a couple of uh, McCartney singles, which I didn't have or certainly didn't have in these lovely uh, picture sleeves. So I got a copy of uh, Listen to What the Man Said here, which is backed with the song, let me see, um, Loving Song is on the B-side there. And then this one here, which is uh, With a Little Luck, a uh, really, really good track. And this is, I think it's a French or some kind of European pressing of it. You've got a Backwards Traveller and a uh, cufflink there on the B side. So yeah, nice to get those two McCartney ones there. Okay, next we batched out are all from the car boot sale that I mentioned there. So this was a car boot sale that is in air. I was down there because my girlfriend's kind of family was there. Kind of we were visiting over the kind of like the Easter um, weekend. And this is a car boot sale which I think is always there. I think maybe ev every second um, Sunday, I think. And it was also, yeah, my first time actually looking for records. I got a car boot sale kind of properly. Um, and it was actually surprisingly good, like a lot better like that. And I thought, and I possibly got a bit carried away, but certainly in terms of the prices, you, you, like you couldn't fault them. That like, they were certainly a lot cheaper, like these records, like than like you get it, like in like any kind of mainstream like record shop. So yeah. Anyway, I'll just go through them. So a few here, which I actually bought for a pound, which yeah, very surprised about. So I got um, Billy Joel here, The Bridge for a pound. And um, this was an 80s album, 86. This one here. I can't say I know any of the singles on here. And um, certainly, like looking at like at like the chat list in there, don't know any of the singles there but just another one to sort of um, add to the Billy Joel um, collection this one it was again a little bit of a not quite a blind buy but one which I don't I don't really know much of this band but again it was a pound so I thought why not for Blamange and the album Happy Families the kind of synth synth pop kind of band I know I pro probably know them um, mostly through their cover of ABBA's The Day Before You Came, which they actually had the bigger hit with that song, Blamange. Um, but no, I'd be interested to hear this one, like not got around to hearing this record yet from early 80s, 1982, I think this one came out. A uh, 12 inch shingle here for a pound, which I thought was a great value there for uh, Paul Simon and uh, The Obvious Child here from the Rhythm of the Saints album there. Yeah, yeah, very happy to get that one. Okay, next one now was actually like a blind buy. It was one which I kind of, the cover sort of intrigued me and, and I thought, okay, I think I might like this. So it's um, the Bodines and the album Outside Looking In, again, for a pound. So it wasn't too much of a risk, like if I didn't like it. Um, and But also this record, what, what, what kind of drew me in from the cover then was also the producer, which is Jerry Harrison from Talking Heads. So I thought, okay, this, this, this should be on paper a really good album and it was i really really enjoyed it very much in that kind of american alternative rock kind of feel of like rem smithereens kind of thing you know good stuff i think um and yeah for a pound i couldn't fault it so um yeah um the bodines there okay sticking with um the car boot sale and um, this one was um not a pound but four pounds so bit more pricey this one here but it's um altered images and the album happy birthday which is again one which i don't see too often the debut album and it's and, and like it is a good record this one here quite uh vibrant and kind of yeah just a fun a fun time this album so yeah enjoyed this one a lot and um, happy birthday there by altered images another one which i haven't got around to playing and it and it's what i have been looking for for uh, um a little while now like i would say but it's um the fun boy three uh debut album here which i think it's just it's just a yeah self-titled self-titled album um here um, and yeah this 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 one's got this one was quite a successful record there's a few good singles on it like the lunatics have taken over the asylum and um, it ain't what you do, it's the way that you do it with uh, Banana Rama on it. Um, so yeah, there's a few sort of big singles like on this record here. It's not one I've played yet, and I'll be honest, um, I'm maybe not expecting too much from it. Um, certainly the other Fun Boy 3 album, um, which I forget the title of, the one produced by David Byrne, I think is a little bit patchy, so I'm not expecting too much from this one here, but I do quite like Terry Hall, um, and uh, and yeah, just eager to sort of get, get more into it. It's got um, this kind of um, original kind of merchandise uh, postal slip on it there, which is quite cool to see as well. So, um, yeah, just thought I'd pick that one up for £6. 
another one here which I rarely see and it's um, yeah by one of the all time great artists uh, Stevie Wonder picked up a copy of uh, Inner Visions here um, another one of his kind of yeah, classic albums from the early 70s this one I think 70 god 70 Two, I think maybe this one or 73 possibly um, yeah really good record here a little bit more um, a lot less commercial I would say than the other album which I've got of his from this era talking book uh, but a good record though like nonetheless I particularly like the track higher ground is probably the most popular track um, on here this was yeah nice pressing off it here um, and yeah for eight pounds off I, I just couldn't resist getting that one Okay, last one now from the car boot sale, and it's a little bit more pricey this one for the car boot sale, fifteen pounds. But for, but this is a record that like in, a, in any kind of normal shop you'd be charged kind of get yeah, thirty pounds plus for it. So it's um, the Cocteau Twins and the album Heads Over Heels. I believe this is their debut album um, from again early eighties. But I do quite like the other Cocteau Twins album which I've got. I think is it called Treasure? Possibly. Um, not played this one yet. Um, but um, yeah, they're a bit a bit out there kind of vocally very airy kind of vocals very ethernal kind of sound to it so perhaps you do have to be in the mood for it but um yeah um like eager to um like yeah was eager to pick this one up for yeah only yeah 15 pounds for that one and then also got a few singles at this fair as well these ones were all a pound each so i got um the pretenders and then um, I Go To Sleep, uh, Ray Davies cover, um, like I believe here from 81, so I think this must have been on the second Pretenders album here, so yeah, yeah, nice to get that one for a pound. Next you see one which I didn't actually have like on a 7 inch, but it's their uh, senses working overtime here, so nice to get this one here, and in really nice condition for a pound as well. And then one of the great new wave songs here is uh, Nick Lowe's uh, Cruel To Be Kind, really great track there, and um, nice to pick that one up. And then also got this one here which is a bit of a fun, item this here it's a bit more this was actually sealed so i did actually um as soon as i opened it kind of reduced its value by half but i got um this george harrison when we was fab kind of box set here so yeah um was great to pick this one up but i i just wanted to open it like you know it's, it's it's almost like a little bit with this it's like what's the fun in just keeping it sealed so with this you get a little poster there of george um which is quite nice. Let, let's let's see let's see what you get here. So you so you get this little kind of postery cutout thing there, George and his kind of Sergeant Pepper um, outfit there. Very much leaning into the Beatles nostalgia with this single and um, when we was fab there. So there's the actual single there, and then you also then get this um, sort of slightly larger poster in it um, as well, which is um, a little bit cheesy um i you would you could say um there so probably won't be putting that up like anytime soon but um yeah nice to get it though though like nonetheless i do like collecting these kind of little yeah seven inch single boxes you know they're just they're just quite unique items and yeah just interested just to see you know what the lengths that these artists would go to to kind of have a hit you know to kind of um sort of like little gimmicks like this but no yeah like they're fun to collect and yeah nice to add this one um to the collection okay so that's it for the um the car boot sale finds and i've just got a few more items here to show and i've, and I've decided to kind of save this band to the end to kind of showcase um like sort of like them like a little bit um it's a band called their uh, kitchens of distinction now i've got my good friend Vi vinyl collector james to thank um for kind of um sort of drawing my attention to these Basically kind of shoegaze kind of band, but with good quality songs as well. But if you're into the likes like The House of Love, you will really, really like these guys. And um, this was, um, this is their fourth album called The Cowboys and Aliens. And then the other one I picked up like at the same time as this, it's probably my favorite of what I've heard from them, The Death of Cool here. Just a fantastic, fantastic, fantastic album here. So I got these two because these are, well, these are both recent reissues of them. Um, and I'm holding out, trying to get originals of the first two. It's just originals of these are very, very difficult to get. So this, so these are both on, on Discogs. I got these. And then very kindly, the seller for free chucked in these two CDs here. So a CD copy of Cowboys and Aliens there. And then this, which is a kind of best off CD which was really really great so it's got it's got one CD is the kind of um, singles or kind of best of sort of tracks and then the other CD is kind of b-sides and rarities and um, so yeah uh, kind of yeah yeah just to get this chucked in for free was absolutely like amazing and um, and yeah um, they are fantastic band I hope to do a video on them kind of soon that wants to maybe read up on like the history on live on like the history and like where they're from a bit more but 
you know, fantastic stuff, um, particularly this album, Death of Cool, is one which I would probably urge everyone to try out and like give it a go. Um, probably, yes, if you're looking for standout tracks, What Happens Now, Four Men and um, Smiling, I would say, are the ones to try from Kitchens of Distinction. So yeah, that's me come to the end of this uh, vinyl update video, so I hope you have all enjoyed. Um, if there's any of these records you would like to see me review or anything, please do leave them down below in the comments and I will see you all next time for the next video. Goodbye. Yeah.